Welcome to this session entitled Load Runner Tips and Techniques Web Service Test. A mouthful of words, but the overall goal of this session is to test a web service using Load Runner. Is it simple to do or is it a complex thing? In this session, I will address a few questions related to the topic. For instance, how can Load Runner be used to test a web service? What components are required? What Load Runner protocol will enable this kind of test? Now, relax, this is not a quiz for you. Let's go on with background, give you a little information about that. I needed to brush up on my skills related to web service testing. I had not done any web service testing in several years. So, needless to say, I needed to know had the tool itself and all the releases that have been published over the years, has it gotten better, easier, more straightforward? I needed to find that out, and you'll find that out in this session as well. The objectives, however, are twofold. I want to continue with this lecture, only four more slides, yay, and then I'll conclude with a demonstration. Now, that leads me to the scope of things. Because of limited time, the demo coverage will be limited to visual, not process. So I will not go into an actual test or script execution. I'm going to show you what I already did and the outputs that came from that. So you'll still see the pertinent information. Now, one last point before we go on. On this diagram, Load Runner VU Gen service calls are enabled by the Load Runner Web Service Protocol. While the SOAP and WSDL requests and responses, they're enabled by XML. So Load Runner is designed for these type of API dialogues. Let's proceed with the remainder of the lecture. Go to the next slide here. I truly hope this video is going to be found valuable to you. I'm not going to cover every bit of information that's in these particular slides. I just want to highlight certain things. And you can see certain highlighted portions here. I want to cover the fact that we're going to see a demo and its coverage is going to be the script itself, the SOA tools menu, and output information that occurred as a result of executing the script. The script is using two of the methods that are provided by the web service. One having to do with the weather map, the second having to do with the weather conditions. So you supply it a zip code and it returns information about that area regarding the weather. The code itself, the script, has basically four actions in it. There are two service calls, one for the weather map, one for the weather conditions. There's uh, statements, transaction statements that have to do with capturing measurements, performance, response time. And the other statements have to do with capturing IO data. What was the input and what was the output? Regarding the service calls and the generating of those service calls, we started with the SOA tools menu that's on the menu bar of Load Runner because of choosing the Load Runner web service protocol. One of the options is manage services. That particular option 
allows for accepting the WSDL URL to identify where the WSDL information is located. It could be local, but in this case, it was a URL. It's on the internet. And when it's supplied and the import button is clicked, then that in load runner gets that information and stores it locally. The second option that we use is the add service call. That's necessary to actually generate a statement within the load runner script. So the add service call basically pulls from that WSDL information that it needs and it is based on a method within the web service. So I utilized two methods. One, as I said, was for the web map and one was for um, with weather conditions, I'm sorry, weather map, weather conditions. Finally, the add service call actually generates a service call statement, which you will see in the script. And there are the additional information or statements that are within the script have to do with enhancements, providing transaction statements to collect measurements and providing output message statements to show the data that was sent and data that returned from the web service. We're moving right along. After the execution, there were several pieces of information that you will see in the demo, and that's the results log, the results summary, and the test results output. So each one will pro provide a different set of information that will help in understanding what happened with the script execution. Did it successfully dialogue with the web service? And did we receive the information expected? And finally, after you've seen the demo, if you still think you need some more information, there's two things I recommend. One is to look at the Load Runner User's Guide. And the second is to go to what's now known as the HP Live Network, HPLN website. It has some good information about various things concerning uh, Load Runner and the use of Load Runner efficiently, as well as the user's guides itself. And you can always find that once it's installed in the install directory under the help folder. There are a number of uh, helpful um, compiled information as well as PDF information and HTML information that can provide you with good technical knowledge about Roadrunner, then specifically web service use. Okay, now we're ready for the demo portion of this session. Let's move this out of the way here. And now we see the Roadrunner IDE. I'm highlighting that. And the first thing I want to show you is that SOA tools menu. So here it is. And I'll click on it once here and we see the manage services and we also see the add service call. Let's uh, look at the manage service real quick. And you will see that I have that one web service called weather and that information was collected. I basically did an import and provided this URL that got the WSDL information and stored it within Load Runner. Second thing is the add services call or add service call. Click here and you get a pop-up window again showing that service. In this case I only have the one service and all the information here are the operations or methods that are available and I chose the by zip and also the weather information those two are in the script and once you do that 
You will also notice that it may or may not have input arguments. Here's the zip code argument. And down here are a number of other parameters that can be, or attributes that can be uh, selected. And I selected things like the city and description and temperature. Okay. I'm going to cancel that, I'm not going to select it again. So basically what it created for me, if I scroll up, you'll notice the first web service call and then the second web service call. And it pulled information. The first one had no input or output arguments, while the second one does. There's the zip code. And if I scroll a little further down, you see the output that's returned. So I only selected four of them. Basically, it starts with uh, whether it was successful or not. And then the city description and temperature. So that's what we should see in the output. I encapsulated those two service calls with transaction statements so that we would get timing, response time on, on those. And I also added some output message statements to capture the information that was sent and information that was received. Now, let's look at the status or the replay summary, if you will. And it shows us that the script passed. It ran on this particular date and time and ended. It only took about Eight, eight seconds to run. And let's look at the log, which is a, the piece of information that I mentioned to you, that you can see what happened there. Scroll up a little bit more. And so here, here we can see where each one started and ended. And the timing on those took longer for that first um, weather map method. A lot less time for the by zip code method. There's the zip code that was entered and here here is an easy enough way to see the output. Spring, mostly sunny, and 83. City was spring, not the season. Okay. And let's look at the actual test output, more, more uh, user-friendly output. I'll overlay everything with that. So here again, we see it passed. We see that there was information for the first method. That's what came back, as well as for the second method. So it tells you the location and the operation or method name. And then we see the information that was sent was the zip code. And finally, the output values. The city, spring. The description, mostly sunny. And the temperature, 83 wasn't actually 83, it was more like 73. I'm not sure why that was the case at that particular time, but that's the information. So there's the output. I'll go back to the script itself. And I believe we have covered all of the information. You saw the replay summary, the action, you saw the log. I mean, this, and so, that was a simple and straightforward test of a web service from start to finish. I thank you for your time.